students welcome to e sectiona so in the previous class we have discussed uh, on uh, the module 5 so we have discussed uh, uh, the contents uh, uh, related to uh, the uh, data communication and uh, uh, all the concepts related to the basic processing unit we have uh, begin a discussion on the basic processing unit okay to continue with we, uh, we are going to further continue with Uh, the uh, other contents related to the basic processing unit like fetching a, a memory how to store a word into the memory uh, and uh, basically uh, how to know the complete sequence for the execution of a complete uh, uh, instruction the se control sequence for executing a complete instruction so all these contents we would like to cover uh, and discuss in this particular session okay so now the coming to the first topic uh, fetching a word from a memory so this requires the basics of what we have discussed yesterday so the uh, uh, so in this particular uh, fetching a word from memory we know that uh, the particular the important registers involved in the transfers are the mar and the mdr okay so here what happens whenever a particular um, uh, word has to be uh, fetched from the main memory so the first and the foremost thing is that the processor is going to uh, it is required for the processor to issue the uh, read signal and uh, to give the address of the uh, location where the instruction or the data is stored okay so when a word is been fetched from memory it is also important to know that whether the instruction is been fetched from memory or the data is been fetched from memory i repeat so to initiate the uh, concept of uh, fetching a word from memory initially the processor has to specify the address of the location from where the instruction or the data has to be uh, fetched and also it has to uh, it all it has to issue a read operation okay so here the mdr is one of the important register which is involved in the particular data transfer so here the uh, uh, extra connections the mdr is associated with four control signals here so mar in uh, e and uh, these connections so mar is having four connections 1 2 3 4 so this connections are uh, it is uh, trying to control what we call the processor bus and uh, these connections uh, that is mdr out e and mdr in e they are concerned with the external memory bus okay so here uh, this uh, the data lines here the input from this register goes it is the uh, output from this mdr it is controlled via mdr out to the processor bus and from the mdr that is the input from the processor can be given into this uh, uh, particular mdr via this control switch mdr in so similarly the input from this particular external bus can be loaded into the uh, mdr by enabling the mdr in e e is the external bus so similarly here mdr out the data from the register can be put on to the external uh, external bus via what we call by enabling this particular switch mdr out e right so this is the connection and control signals for the register mde which helps in the data transfer okay so as i told you to fetch a word from memory so the uh, every read or a memory operation a read operation is said to be completed within one cpu clock cycle so all the operations are scheduled uh, within uh, the processor timeline so when we are having the uh, whenever a processor issues a uh, memory uh, read operation to a particular device or to a particular memory uh, so usually the uh, the operation speed of the processor and the memory it is uh, there is a mismatch between the operation speed of the memory and the processor so because uh, sometimes what happens the, uh, whatever the processor has requested that may not be readily available in the cache and uh, due to this what happens there may be a cache miss in that case there will be a mismatch in the processor speed and the processor has to wait for certain amount of time for uh, fetching a word okay so in order to uh, in order to resolve this particular problem a uh, memory uh, the memory function complete signal is been used 
wherein whenever the device that uh, whatever the processor is going to request whenever the device is ready and it has completed uh, the requested operation it is going to uh, indicate to the processor by sending a signal called as the memory function complete signal so therefore the coordination can be achieved between the uh, processor and that of the uh, device okay so here fetching a word the responses as i told you the time response of each memory access are going to vary because there may be a cache miss or in some cases there may be a uh, uh, memory mapped io so what do you mean by the memory mapped io so whenever a device there are two types of io device uh, management uh, techniques what we have studied previously memory mapped io and io mapped io so in the case of memory mapped io the I, uh, the io device is also it is mapped to a particular memory so therein what happens uh, the registers which are uh, which are uh, uh, mapped to the memory they are not uh, they uh, sometimes what happens the relevant data is missing in the register so there uh, therefore it is going to take some extra time uh, to fetch the re uh, required content from the memory okay so therefore the response time whenever the processor has requested something there is a delay for the processor to get the required amount of data to accommodate with this delay uh, the processor waits until it receives a indication from the requested operation uh, that has been completed okay so that is called as the, the uh, memory function completed signal called as the mfc signal right so this example uh, for example now let us see how the operation uh, how the particular instruction move r1 comma r2 is been uh, executed and what is the control sequence for fetching a word from the memory right so the sequence of steps that is required for uh, executing for, for uh, uh, this particular uh, instruction move r1 comma r2 so what happens this particular um, in this particular example okay so this particular move r1 comma r2 so as you can see here this is a indirect addressing <coughs> so you are loading the contents of, of the register r1 into the register r2 so initially what happens we are placing the contents of r1 into the memory address register okay mar is called as the memory address register because we are trying to move this particular thing r1 is holding an address whatever the address of r1 it is loaded into the uh, mar so now the mar is having the address of the location where the data has to be fetched or where the data has to be read from okay so now then uh, read operation uh, is being initiated on the memory bus then a read operation is said to be initiated on the memory bus then wait for the mfc response from the memory wait for the mfc response what is this mfc memory function complete response from the memory okay so then what happens load uh, the when once the memory uh, read operation has been completed uh, the required data is available in the mdr and uh, load the mdr from the memory bus so these are the sequence of operations that are required for uh, 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 for implementing this uh, particular operation move r1 comma r2 right and finally because we are required to uh, move the resultant into the data now it is there in the mdr from the mdr it has to be loaded into the uh, register r2 so therefore move the contents of mdr into the register r2 right so this is complete sequence of operations uh, for that can be uh, uh, that is going to take place for uh, typical uh, instruction okay move r1 comma r2 so this particular slide it is going to illustrate the complete control sequence this represents the control sequence so what is the difference between this and the previous slide so in the previous slide we have seen uh, the particular uh, uh, so this is the uh, steps that is involved in to carry out this particular operation all these are the basic steps that are needed so all these basic steps are now trying uh, uh, it is now implemented in the form of a, it is 
now written in the form of a control sequence uh, and uh, this uh, timing diagram it uh, completely uh, illustrates how a memory read operation is said to be completed okay so now initially assume the mar is always available on the address lines what do you mean by this uh, line that means mar mar is nothing but the memory address register so the output of memory address register it is always connected it is always available on the uh, address lines of the external pro, uh, external memory bus okay i repeat the content whatever is the there the whatever is loaded in the mar the, the data uh, the address information whatever loaded in mar it will be made available on the address bus that is the meaning of the statement mar is always available the output of mar is always available on the address lines of the memory bus okay so now what happens see here as I, uh, we have discussed previously all the operations uh, that is uh, been taking place it is been uh, synchronized with the help of uh, cpu clock cycles internal processor clock okay so and we assume that the bus uh, uh, the processor is the bus master so it is having the control over all the operations okay so therefore here this is the clock cpu clock so then initially a particular mar in okay so that is the address is loaded uh, by the processor into the mar okay so when an mar uh, the content is loaded the address information from where the memory from where the instruction or data to be fetched is loaded by the processor so that information is made available on the address bus right so parallelly whenever the information is available uh, whenever the data is uh, address information is loaded in the uh, mar register that address is made available on the address bus and also the particular uh, parallelly a uh, read signal it is been issued by the processor all these three things take uh, uh, at the same time right so mar in whenever the data is loaded the processor also issues a read operation and then after few seconds the address is going to appear the content whatever is there the addressing information appears on the address lines okay so then what happens uh, the interface circuit it is going to issue the bus interface circuit that is present it is going to issue a memory read operation so this memory read operation will be issued after uh, at this particular after one clock cycle okay so you can see here after a, a certain time delay right okay so when this is made, made uh, when the memory read it is been uh, issued by the interface circuits so then what happens the information uh, it is been uh, conveyed a read signal is generated to the uh, memory okay so now when the particular uh, then what happens mdr in e so the data the requested data should be uh, made available by the memory right so into which registers it is going to load now it is going to load into the mdr right so the mdr what it is going to do as you have seen in the previous slide okay so in this particular slide the particular uh, as you have seen the offset value uh, in the uh, where the x is been connected uh, the how to fetch a word from the memory okay so in this particular example okay so this in this particular slide we have seen uh, the particular uh, content one second okay so here what happens the particular mdr in i repeat the whole process here the uh, the cpu is going to generate the clock signal the uh, at the same time what happens whenever a mar it is going to issue the mar it is going to be uh, the processor is going to load 
load the information and a read signal will be generated right ok. So, now what happens after a certain period of time uh, the whenever the issue whenever the memory uh, it is going to get the read signal. So, after a certain amount of time the MDR the data that is from the memory bus it will be loaded into the MDR right. So, whatever uh, because the MDR it is connected it is having four control signals as we have seen in the previous uh, uh, slide ok. So, MDR in E ok. So, the MDR is being connected with the four input controls that is the uh, MDR uh, out, MDR in, MDR out and MDR in it is connected to the internal processor bus whereas, uh, MDR in E and MDR uh, out E is connected to the external processor bus ok. So, first the particular information from the memory is loaded, uh, it is being uh, loaded into the MDR in E ok. So, at this particular clock cycle and then whatever the data it is there it appears it is loaded into the MDR register right at this particular C now. So, here the data is made available in the data bus and then the uh, it is made uh, and a memory function complete it is going to wait for the entire data transfer to be completed and when once the entire data is completed after a particular MFC signal is completed. So, the data is made it is being sent to the uh, MDR register and from here the data will be fetched by the processor into the respective registers. So, this is whole concept of what we call the um, how the timing diagram which illustrates the sequence of uh, the events that are going to take place for a complete uh, what we call for the complete uh, fetch operation ok. So, here uh, this particular uh, in the timing diagram we can see the operation that is uh, said is the example is move R 1 comma R 2. So, first R 1 whatever the data it is there R 1 R 1 out why we have to use R 1 out because you are you have to move the contents of R 1 into the register uh, R 2 ok. So, you are going to move the contents of uh, R 1 ok. So, you are going to move the contents of R 1 into R 2. So, now what happens you are moving the contents of R 1 into R 2. So, therefore, first R 1 content that means whatever is there in R 1 because it is a memory operation you have to load the uh, MAR in ok. So, what is the MAR in it is a memory address register you are loading the value of uh, R 1 register into a MAR and issue a memory read operation. So, that is what it is going to happen here when we are going to transfer the contents the processor is going to transfer the contents MAR and issue a read operation. So, then in the second step what happens uh, the when a read operation is being issued to the memory because there is a mismatch between the uh, processor speed and the memory speed. So, the processor will wait uh, for the completion of the specified operation ok. So, that is that uh, significance uh, we can be used here it is uh, that is the reason why we use here uh, WFMC that is the uh, memory function complete ok. So, now what happens uh, here what when once the read operation is being issued. So, then what happens it is going to uh, that is uh, we are going to load the data MDR in E. Okay. So, memory uh, uh, that is the data is being loaded we are going to wait until the data is being fetched into the MDR in E ok and wait for the memory function to complete ok. So, then what happens uh, when once the data is available in the MDR ok. So, then it is being copied finally into the MDR out. So, what is the difference between MDR in E and MDR out? So, this is connected to the processor external processor uh, uh, external memory bus and this is what we it is connected to the processor ok. So, this therefore, finally we are required to move the content uh, into the processor ok MDR out from the MDR out it will be copied into the register.
register R2. Okay, it is the register R2 because we have to move it into the register R2. So this is the complete sequence uh, for uh, what we are going to call for fetching a word from memory. Okay, so this is the control sequence for uh, generating this. Okay. So the next, uh, after knowing about the complete sequence for uh, generating a word, uh, for fetching a word from memory, so the next concept is storing a word in memory. Okay. So for storing a word in memory, so from uh, which is the source and which is the destination here, the processor will become the source and memory is the destination. You are going to write the results from the processor into the memory, right? So therefore, address is loaded into the MAR, the data uh, what has to be written first it is loaded into the MDR, okay. Then a write command is being issued, the write command is issued. So in this case now move uh, whatever the content R2 is the source and R1 is the destination. So first what we are going to do, the content of uh, because we are required to set the address here, you have to set the address into which location we want to write. So address information has to be loaded always in the MAR in. So therefore R1 out, the contents of R1 register, okay, why this out you know that for every outputting, uh, copying from this register th to this register. The register input and output is always controlled by in and out that is what we have seen yesterday. So that is the reason why when you are transferring, when R1 is acting as a source or the output variable, so you have to use that out. So if R1 is a in, so then if it is R1 is your input, then we have to use here in, okay, that is the difference between in and out, okay. So R1 out comma MAR in. So now what you are going to do, you are going to transfer the contents of MAR uh, into this particular register. So you are going to transfer R1 into uh, R2, uh, okay. Sorry, here what you are going to do, first you are going to transfer the contents of MAR into the register, uh, okay. So whatever the address is there now, address information, I repeat the uh, example here, what you have to do, move the contents of R2 into the area specified by R1, it is an indirect addressing, right. So therefore now what you have to do here, first you are uh, moving R1 out comma MAR in, so R1 is having the address, that inf address information is uh, first copied into MAR, okay. So this is what MAR in register is always used for holding the address of a memory location, okay. So now the address information is made available and also the parallelly even the data, not only the address because uh, not only the address information and uh, not only the address information and e also the data information called as the MDR, the data information has to be loaded into the MDR register. So that is the reason from where, the, where is your, uh, so which is our source now, R2 is the source from R2, it has to be copied into the MDR register and issue a write operation because it is a memory store, uh, we have to use the processor issues a write signal, write control signal here, okay. So then what happens, uh, then uh, because uh, it has to be uh, uh, carried via the uh, MDR out E, okay, it has to be carried via MDR out E, so that is what we have seen here. So in the MDR, MDR if you are going to take, MDR is being controlled by four control uh, lines, okay. So this is our processor bus and this is our external bus. So whenever the input from the register to the external memory, uh, uh, this is our external memory, right, via external bus. So you have to uh, use here MDR, okay, so MDR in E, that is the external bus and MDR out uh, E, okay. So this uh, relevant operations we have to use. So whenever it is connected with the, whenever we are dealing with the transfers with the processor bus, oh, that is you are loading the content in and out from the processor bus into the MDR. So just we have to use the MDR in and MDR out respectively, right? Okay, please note the difference. What is the difference between MDR in E and MDR uh, out E, okay, out E and MDR in E, right, okay. So that
that is the reason why we are going to use here MDR out here because from here from the processor it has to be transferred to the external bus. Okay. So, first it is loaded here um, from the register R2 it will be loaded via this particular uh, MDR uh, out E, MDR out E to the external processor bus and from there it will be uh, a write signal and wait for the memory function to get completed. So, this is what uh, the complete sequence so for um, write operation. Okay. So, for the uh, or what you call the read operation, I repeat the sequence here R1 out comma MAR in, R2 out MDR in comma write. Okay and MDR out E comma wait for the memory function to get completed. So, whenever a read or a write uh, operation is being issued, the processor waits for the completion uh, of the device, of the uh, designated device, because the device indicates by sending a, sing a signal called as the memory function completed signal. Okay. So, this is what the discussion with respect to how to search a fetch, uh, how to uh, fetch a word from the memory and store a word in memory. Please practice the control sequence and the uh, relevant uh, examples. So, this uh, fetching and uh, storing a word in memory is an important concept in this particular chapter. Okay. So, next uh, to move ahead, this is a very, very important uh, concept. Every time uh, one, uh, one question will be there from this particular part in the exam execution of a complete instruction. So, what we are going to do here execution of a complete instruction. So, in this particular case execution of a complete instruction. So, now we are required to know what are the sequence of steps that are required to execute to just one, uh, uh, one uh, instruction. Okay. The example instruction is add R1 comma it is an indirect addressing. What do you mean by the indirect addressing here? See the register it is containing uh, register R2 for example, it is holding certain value. Think now it is holding some value 1000. right? So, when I write 1000, so whatever at the location 1000, so there is certain data. Now, uh, imagine like at the 1000 there is some data value 15. So, this data value, uh, sorry, this is R1, okay, R1, okay, and there is another register called as R2 whose contents are like 10. So, you are required now to uh, particularly add the contents 15 and 10, but here what happens directly register uh, uh, contents are not, uh, uh, the operands are not specified here, it is an indirect addressing the R1 contains the address of a memory location whose contents have to be added into the R2. Okay. So, now in order to uh, uh, execute this complete instruction, so what we are going to do first, uh, these are the typical steps that are needed and apart from this, the important uh, thing what you have to concentrate is the control sequence, the generation of the control sequence. Okay. So, this particular thing now add R1 comma R2 is our example, it is our example. So, now we are required to know how to execute, what is the sequence, control sequence for executing this uh, particular instruction uh, at the machine level within our basic processing unit, how the control, info, control sequence is generated and how the execution takes place. So, that we are required to study. Right. The first step is that the first uh, step here is the fetch the instruction, the instruction fetch the instruction and uh, followed by fetch the first operand, perform the addition and load the resultant into the register R2. Okay. So, what you are going to do here, the com I repeat the sequence, first is the instruction fetch phase followed by the execution phase fetch the instruction, instruction fetch phase, after the instruction is being fetched from a, de a desired memory location. So, then we have to fetch the operands of that instruction, whether the operands are available within the memory or uh, uh, whether they are a part of the registers. Okay. Fetch the first operand, the contents of the memory location is stored at R1 in this particular case. 
perform the required addition perform the required addition load the result in the uh, resultant register r2 okay so here uh, these are the sequence of steps so now we are required to know how the what is the control sequence for executing this particular instruction so step by step we are required to know right okay so this right so this is the complete sequence uh, of uh, complete what you call the control sequence for executing this particular uh, instruction uh, add r1 comma r3 right okay so this uh, particular what happens here in this particular instruction add r3 comma r1 as i have already explained the meaning of this instruction so this uh, particular the controls this uh, figure here this part totally it is going to give you the control the complete control sequence for uh, the what you call uh, for the execution of a complete instruction the first and the foremost thing here is that the first three steps what you are going to call the first three steps here this is called as the instruction fetch phase okay i repeat this is the instruction fetch phase okay followed by the decoding and the execution phases so these the, uh, after 4 to 7 illustrate the execution phase right so i repeat the uh, steps 1 to 3 it is going to be called as the instruction fetch phase followed by the instruction execution phase right so in the instruction fetch phase first and the foremost thing what happens the contents of the inst instruction has to be fetched here okay uh, imagine now the particular instruction is stored at some uh, memory location so the address of that the processor tries to issue the uh, address of that particular thing okay address of that uh, instruction um, and issues a read signal the address of that inform of that memory location is loaded into the program counter okay so usually uh, program counter sorry program counter will be holding the address of the instruction to be executed i repeat program counter holds the address of the instruction to be next instruction to be executed the first instruction to be fetched the address of that uh, instruction it is been loaded into our program counter okay so the uh, value th now the program counter is holding the address of the instruction to be fetched the data from the program counter okay so when you want to transfer the content from the program counter so you have to use pc out is the uh, output okay pc out it is the register control what you have to use here pc out because you are copying the contents from the program counter into you are transferring the contents of program counter into the register mar okay because you are inputting into mar this is called as a mar in okay so is that clear first copy the contents of pcr in uh, pc program counter into the mar register and issue a read control signal and also parallelly what you have to do you have to see that the program counter is uh, you have to update uh, the value of the program counter the program counter the addresses are said to be byte addressable so therefore uh, you have to the program counter is been incremented by 4 so in the previous classes we have seen that the whatever is the whenever the pc value has to be incremented by 4 so this is the select signal okay the select signal we have to uh, make the mux to select the constant 4 by uh, by uh, making the select signal to select the constant 4 so that is the reason why we have used here select 4 right is that clear so now what happens constant 4 is been selected by the mux and it is been added okay uh, the, uh, this particular read uh, it is been added with another input okay the mux is what going to do it is going to select this constant 4 and already this because uh, mar in and a read signal is been issued so this particular output uh, this y uh, <coughs> so this constant 4 is made uh, it is been selected by the mux and whatever is the pc value okay it has been appearing on the mar uh, register so from the mar register 
whatever the address lines are there okay so the uh, initially the pc pc uh, content is uh, loaded into the mar pc content is loaded into the mar and what happens uh, this particular uh, the value of the pc it is going to appear here the old value of the pc is going to appear via the input d and uh, plus 4 the uh, incremented uh, the uh, alu is going to implement the add operation and then what happens it is the uh, the output is being given here new value of the pc updated value of the program counter it is being uh, stored in the z uh, register okay so therefore you are having the z in here right okay so this after z in so we are going to again transfer it into the program counter pc in you are going to because uh, pc is equal to pc plus 4 so whatever the uh, z is there that information will be put up and again it will be transmitted into this uh, copied into the uh, program counter so therefore z out comma pc in okay so then what happens uh, this is the control sequence required for the complete execution of a complete instruction z out pc in comma what you are going to here see here pc in comma y in and uh, uh, wait for the memory function to complete wait for the memory function to complete so here what we are going to do here in the first three steps uh, the uh, required operation is said to be mdr out comma ir in so here the complete uh, instruction will be fetched now okay so now what happens uh, i repeat the sequence here so initially what you are going to do you are going to store the pc into the register the output of uh, uh, pc is being copied into uh, mar register and then a read signal is being issued by the processor and then what happens uh, this select for because to update the contents of the memory is being selected and uh, what we are going to do here and uh, the add operation is implemented within the alu right so when add operation is implemented within the alu the updated value it is being copied into the z in register okay z in register now the updated uh, from the z in the new value is loaded into the pc because the pc is going to uh, hold the address of the next instruction to be executed so z out comma pc in comma y in okay so again uh, the new value it is been uh, loaded into this particular uh, uh, what we call the y in and uh, wait for the memory function to get completed okay so now what happens the requested whatever the read uh, memory instruction fetch operation it is uh, required instruction is now made available in the mdr register okay so now the contents of the mdr register it is now transferred the contents of the mdr will be transferred to the instruction register so mdr out comma ir in right so now all these three steps here one two three steps are called as the fetch if it is called as the fetch phase because the instruction from the uh, memory uh, it is been uh, it is been uh, uh, used okay uh, to fetch the required instruction from the memory and load okay so therefore the one two three steps are called as the uh, it is called as the fetch phase so now the instruction which is available in the ir register instruction register the control and the decoding logic here tries to interpret the contents of the instruction register ir it is called as the instruction register instruction register the control is said to be uh, instruction register contents are interpreted here right by the control and the uh, decode logic so now what happens instruction is made available but we have to fetch the required operands to execute the instruction so in the next step 4 5 and 6 again the execution of an instruction is going to take place in order to execute the instructions the operand should be made available right so in order to make the uh, in order to see that whether the data is uh, available within the processor registers within the general purpose registers or not because now it is uh, one of the uh, operand is 
is a part of uh, the general purpose register, but uh, another operand it is there you have to fetch from a required memory location. So, therefore, now again whatever the content R3, R3 is holding the address, right? R3 is holding the address of a memory location where the data is stored, right? So, we have to fetch the data from this particular memory location. So, whenever the fetching means you have to load it into the memory uh, address register and, uh, uh, and issue a read operation, okay, and issue a read operation, okay. So, now what happens when you are going to issue a read operation, we have to wait, uh, the processor has to wait until that uh, read operation is said to be completed and then what happens. Uh, so, meanwhile what happened this R1 is there. So, R1 you are going to provide as a input, okay, R1 is one of the you are enabling the MUX to uh, use this particular thing, right, okay. So, R1 out comma y, y in, so that is you are trying to see that whatever the output is there, okay, because one of the output is uh, the uh, one of the input to the ALU is A and B. Because now you are implementing arithmetic operation, you have to enable the MUX to select this particular thing Y, okay. So, therefore, you are going to select this Y in and uh, uh, R1 out, okay. Uh, R1 out comma Y in and wait for the memory function to complete. What function? Read operation, read operation to complete, okay. Now, this step tells that your data, what is the data? R1. So, R1 is via Y, okay, and R2, where is R3 now, R3, which is the required data, the content, the uh, memory location, the content from R3, it has to be read uh, from the memory location, okay. So, now the content from the MDR will be put on to this particular processor bus and then it enters the CPU via uh, ALU via the B. Uh, so, therefore, now the M, uh, MDR out comma select Y add, okay. So, this operation will be implemented. What is this MDR out? The MDR out will see that the data is rooted from the uh, required memory location from here. It is loaded into this particular B, okay. And uh, this contents of R1 is already available via Y, okay. So, therefore, this content plus this content will be added and the resultant will be copied into the Z register and Z in. So, the output from the Z is put on to the register, in on to the processor bus, okay. So, Z out and from there it is copied into this particular uh, register R1, okay. It is copied into because this is the destination, you are copying from the Z into the register R1. So, this is the total sequence of operation, uh, control sequence needed for executing a complete instruction, okay. I repeat the sequence once again. So, please practice this particular um, uh, particular example. So, this is a uh, uh, frequently asked question in the exam, write the uh, control sequence for the completion, for the execution of a complete instruction, okay. So, now what happens, I repeat this particular slide, a quick review of this. So, this is the execution of a control sequence that is needed for the execution of a complete C, uh, instruction. So, initially what happens, you have to load the address, uh, the particular uh, address which is stored in the PC into the memory address register. So, this uh, memory address register and then the processor issues a memory read. 1, 2, 3 steps are always common for any type of uh, instruction you write, okay, control sequence, 1, 2, 3 are uh, always the same because these 3 steps illustrate the fetching of an instruction. The steps are going, other steps are going to vary, these steps are going to vary depending upon whether your instruction is there in a register or uh, it is in the memory location. Depending upon the addressing uh, modes uh, of the instruction, the control sequence here it is going to vary, okay. So, now what happens the PC program, the uh, execution it is going to take place sequentially and uh, program counter is updated by just adding the value 4.
before okay so unless and until a branch instruction is not encountered so i repeat so pc uh, first the pro contents of pc program counter it is uh, loaded into the register mar and a memory read operation is said to be issued memory read operation so these three steps are now clear and then what we have to do we have to see that pc is said to be incremented by a factor of 4 right so in order to see that operation is been executed what we have to do pc okay for pc whatever is the content of pc we have to add 4 so in order to implement this operation we have to make the mux uh, we have to make the mux to select the constant 4 so select 4 means the mux will be able to select this in uh, this input right so therefore select add comma z in and add operation will be carried out so whatever the new value of z out is there that will be loaded into our program counter because you are loading from z out into this particular uh, pc it is called as pc in okay so now what you are going to do pc in and wait for y in and wait for memory function to be completed okay so what you are going to do now the updated value pc in and uh, uh, wait for the read operation to be completed when once the read operation is been completed uh, now what happens mdr out comma ir in so what is this now whatever the data when once a memory read operation uh, is been uh, completed uh, okay the required data is made available information instruction is made available in the mdr register from the mdr it is been fetched into this ir it is loaded into the mdr into the instruction register the contents are interpreted analyzed by the control and the circuit uh, present here and therefore mdr out comma ir in is the particular step so 1 2 3 are called as the instruction fetch phase and 4 5 6 7 is called as the execution phase so now to execute the, when the instruction loaded in the ir it has been interpreted so it will check for the operands so r3 and r1 are the operands now so R3, it is a memory location as I told you, R3 holds the address of a memory location from whose uh, operand is stored at that location. So operand from that memory location has to be added with R1. So therefore, first we are going to transfer because it is a address information, again we have to read the data from the memory. So whenever a read is there, what we have to do R3 out comma MAR in and what we are going to do read the data read the data uh, read the information from and issue a read uh, to the memory whenever we are issuing a read or a write so you have to in the next uh, sequence you have to use the memory function complete signal right so now what you have to do uh, this uh, the when we have uh, uh, loaded the address of this one into mar and generate a read signal so then what we have to do parallelly move the contents of this one okay r1 register into the y in and uh, uh, wait for the memory function to be completed right so here what happens the mdr out comma so now what happens here you have selected one of the input that is r1 uh, is through the register y and uh, r3 contents are loaded via b so that is what it is going to happen here mdr out how we are loading this uh, the another input to be that is when you place the uh, address uh, into mar the uh, and issue a read signal the operand is fetched into mdr and from the mdr it is placed on the data bus and it is gated it here right to the b so now what we are going to do the alu selects this uh, uh, this particular input as well as the select y okay and uh, it is going to perform the add operation and uh, the resultant is being copied into the z and what happens finally we are going to move the contents from the z into the register r1 okay and then we are going to end the control the execution of the control uh, of the program of the instruction gets uh, ended here and uh, notify that by using the end symbol here end instruction here so this represents the complete sequence of the uh, uh, machine uh, instruction add r1 comma 
uh, R3 comma R1. So please practice this control sequence. It is uh, very important from the exam point of view.